Hello there, it's Brian Burkhardt here and uh, welcome to all of you to our leather crafting tutorial, workshop, whatever you want to call it. This video is primarily for some of the young people living in our local area who are stuck at home because of the coronavirus, just to give them a little project to do, something that can be worked into their homeschooling that they're all doing right now. I'm sure there's other people that might watch it too, and you're more than welcome. That's great. Anyway, we're working on some coasters. So I gave these young people a kit each to make a couple of coasters. The first coaster we're going to do, it um, looks like this. It's a bit busy, as uh, but it's only made with two different tools and I'll show you those tools in a bit. Um, we start out with something that's uh, looking like this. Uh, so I'll put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing down here. Working on a hard surface. I've got a slab, a um, granite slab. I put a piece of plywood in each kit for the young people so at least use that underneath. Don't work on something soft like a tablecloth or something. Have something hard underneath so that reduces the bounce that you get. You don't want any bounce on your tools afterwards when we're putting these impressions into the leather. You just want one nice clean impression with each tool each time you hit it. So this is a vegetable tanned leather which means that it was tanned using natural products, no chemicals. The tannins that come out of the tree bark and other natural um, plants are used to tan the leather. The tanning process makes sure that it doesn't deteriorate, like decompose anymore, like normally skin would. And it keeps it pliable, keeps it relatively soft, so you can still work with it afterwards. In order to um, put different designs into leather onto it, you have to make it wet. Right now it's fairly hard the surface um, and we have to make it wet so it gets softer and then we can actually use different tools to make impressions on the leather. There's two different, we call this tooling, tooling the leather. And there's two different basic ways of tooling. One is stamping and the other is carving. I'll just show you a couple of examples of coasters, finished ones. So this coaster here, has a basket weave pattern on it and this is stamped so there's a stamp that you use to make this pattern into the leather then this here is a coaster that is carved um, so you use a, a swivel knife and uh, I'll just show you a swivel knife looks like this uh, you cut these lines into the leather and then you use different tools to bevel the edges to um, give it the shading, to give it the background and things like that. So you actually carve the image into the leather. So we're not going to be doing carving today, we're going to be doing stamping. And the first coaster we're going to do is going to have this um, pattern on it, this stamping pattern. Okay, so we're going to get the leather wet. You all got a sponge and I hope you have some water with you. Uh, the leather needs to have quite a bit of water. And so get it really soaked. You'll see how the leather soaks the water up. Uh, I can put some water on here and right away it kind of very quickly it disappears. It gets soaked into the leather. That's one way to make sure if you're buying vegetable tanned leather to do some tooling on. Uh, that's one way to test and see if it's good leather for tooling is how quickly does it and how um, evenly does it soak up water. So when I'm buying leather, I sometimes ask the person selling it if I can put a little spit on a corner or a little bit of water and uh, see how it soaks in and they've always said yes. So that's a good way to see um, how good the leather is for tooling. Um, you want the water to soak through about halfway through the leather. So um, I might need a little bit more here. And then we're just going to let it dry for a little bit. You don't want the surface of the leather to be too wet. You want the moisture to be inside. If the surface is too wet, it's kind of mushy and you don't get nice, clean, crisp 
uh, impressions when you're stamping or carving the leather. But what we can do already is make the marks on there that we need uh, kind of a guideline for where we're going to stamp. So the first mark we're going to make is a circle around the outside. So if you have your compass um, or what we as leather workers call a wing divider, the difference between a compass and a wing divider is that the wing divider has two pointy tips, metal tips. There's no way of attaching a uh, pencil to it, at least not to this one. So a wing divider, but you can use a compass. And we want at the first, um, let me just measure it here, the first line that we're going to make onto our wet coaster is going to be eight millimeters. So eight millimeters, you can set that, which if you're thinking in inches is five sixteenths, approximately five sixteenths of an inch or eight millimeters. So set your, take your ruler, set your compass to eight millimeters apart, the two points, and you can use the pencil on one side or two sharp points if you have them. And then we're gonna make a circle all the way around the outside, eight millimeters from the edge. The way you hold your compass or your wing divider is not straight up and down, but to tilt it towards yourself so that it's actually almost laying down, not quite laying down, but maybe at a 45 degree angle. You do not put very much pressure on it. Once leather is wet, um, any slight pressure on it will make an indentation. So you have to be even careful with your fingers, with your fingernails especially. Now you don't want any marks on there. You can't get rid of them or virtually can't get rid of them afterwards. And you want the two tips to be pointing towards the center of the coaster. So approximately towards the center of the coaster. And then I just hold my wing divider like this. So the one outside tip is kind of down onto the surface, onto your wood if you have that piece of plywood underneath. And the other one just lays lightly on top of the, the coaster. And then I just turn the coaster and my two tips are always pointing in one in a line. If I extend the line between the two tips, they're always pointing towards the center of the coaster. And I do this all the way around, just a light line all the way around. Kind of like that. Then we're going to do another line and this one is going to go straight across approximately in the center. So from one side to the other, it doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but approximately in the center, we're going to put another really light line all the way across the middle. And you can use a pencil or you can use your compass or your wing divider if you have one and just mark a really light line and do not go beyond the circle that we made. So not all the way across, only as far as the circle goes. Okay, not past the circle. Okay, we're ready to start stamping. We're gonna use this tool here. <clears throat> this is one of the two tools that we use to make this design on the coaster. This is called a veiner. Now, it comes from the veins in a leaf. These tools are used to imitate veins in leaves uh, when you're making a, a leaf on, on a plant. <clears throat> That's why they're called veiners. They come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. This is the most common one. This is the one you'll get in a toolkit when you buy a basic toolkit from, from Tandy Leather. This, this is one of the six basic stamps that you'll get, this veiner. Um, the way we're going to use it is we're going to line up the two outside points, the heels they're called, with that line and put one almost, well you don't have to measure it, but approximately in the middle. Actually it would be good to measure it. Figure out where the center is, how many, see how many centimeters it is or inches from one side to the other. Mine is eight and a half centimeters from the circle line 
on the one side to the circle line on the other. So the straight line I made is eight and a half centimeters. So 4.25 would be the center, 4.25. I'm just gonna make a little dot there, 4.25 would be the center. Now, I'm gonna put this tool right onto the line with the two heels so that the point, the center is in the center of the tool. I'm gonna to hold my tool with my left hand, I'm right-handed, so I hammer with my right hand, straight up and down, not tilted in any direction, straight up and down, the two points right on the line, and I'm gonna have these fingers here at the bottom of the tool and on my leather, not with a fingernail, you'll make a mark into the leather, but still fairly steady, that way it's not gonna move, and I'm gonna put a bit of downward pressure on the tool, and then I'm gonna give it a light and a bit of a harder tap. And I'm gonna have a look at it and see what the impression, how the impression looks. So it's right up to the line. And if it's, I see on the one side, I didn't get it quite, I was probably tilting it a little bit to one side. Now it's nice and even all the way across. And it gets darker, the impression. That's because we're compressing the leather, pushing it down and there are oils and waxes worked into the leather in from the tannery and this is what gives the dark shade the darker shade as we make the impression now the next stamp is going to be i'm going to put this tool right into the heel right into the heel of the previous stamp impression and then again to the line on the other side let me turn that a bit around so you can see it better so this corner is gonna go right, this heel is gonna go right into the previous heel, and I'm gonna put it down right on the line again, and a couple of taps, and then the next one, again like that, and then in my direction, again, this heel right into the previous heel, and then this one right into there. So, should have five, side by side on there. Now what we're gonna do is we wanna keep going until we get to the line, the circle around the outside, but never past it. So what we have to do now, we put this heel into here on the outside, but I'm gonna tilt the tool towards myself. So I only get uh, a light impression on my end of this veiner. So don't go down too far or else you'll, you'll make a mark outside of that line that we put around the outside. We don't want any marks outside of that line. Um, and you only need a very light tap. The less surface is touching the leather on a tool, the less force you need onto the tool in order to make a deep impression. So just a light tap. And I make sure that this tip here is lined up approximately where the line would be if it were if there were a line further outside, a straight line going through. A light tap there, just so I can see as if the next one was going there. And then the same thing on the other side. Just a very small little, as if it kept going. Now we're gonna turn it around and do the other side exactly opposing. So we'll start in the middle again and put it right on the line, opposing the other one, just like that, and all the way across. And again, the short little ones, just angling it and angling it. There we go. So your first line across should look something like this. Now we're going to keep going and we're going to, you can eyeball this. We don't have to do any measuring. The next line is going to be from the middle to the middle of the circle. Just like that, okay? And then again, we're gonna go across, put 
the heel into the previous heel and it should go right to the center of the next circle and go like this all the way across. And here now we're going to have a longer one, but it's not going to go all the way out. I don't have room for a full one, so I'm not going to angle it as much as I did previously, but I am going to lift that outside corner up a bit so that I'm not going to go past about like that. And the same on the other side. And then we're going to just keep going now that one I was able to do all the way it fit I always like starting with a full one not with a half one Oh, I just got a little bit over the edge there. Happens to all of us. Okay, I think but as far as I can go there, then turn it around and do the other side. Okay, so that's what it should look like. You can always pause the video if you need a little bit more time. Because now we get to the other tool. We only use two tools, two stamps for this coaster. The other tool, stamp, whoops, not this one, this one. It's called a camouflage tool. 
it's got two heels just like the Vayner does and then this kind of starburst to the outside. The first thing we're going to do is do the insides and then we'll do around the outside. So the way we use this tool is we point it towards, I'll just do one and then I'll show you what I mean. You point it towards the two little circles beside the big circle inside of this design. We're starting in the middle row, right in the middle design, which goes in both directions. So put, and again, straight up and down, this one, straight up and down, and uh, the two heels into those two little circles, just a tiny little bit from the edge maybe. And this tool, when you look at it from the side, is um, not quite level. The heels are stick further out than the back of the tool, the sunburst. The sunburst kind of fades out. Uh, the heels go in the deepest if you hold the tool straight up and down, which is what we're doing here. So the heels will be in deeper and the sunburst kind of fades out. Now, to go along this line, we're gonna go back and forth. We're gonna, we did this one this way Sorry, I'll turn it here that you can see it. We did this one this direction. So we're going to do the next one, spin the tool around and do the next one the other direction, putting the tip, the heels right into those two little, I don't know if you can see that, right into those two little circles beside the bigger circle. And on the other side exactly as well and then spin it around and do the next two the other way around again the same way we did the one in the middle so you should have a line like this across going one way and then the other way now we're going to work our way out to the to the edges in both directions but then always going the same the same way it's only that middle row that we switch back and forth so i'm going to come into this one And I can just go straight across one after the other. And I don't have to hit too hard on these. And again, if you get close to the edge, then you tilt your tool so that you don't go, even with this tool now, you don't want to go over the edge. Like right here, I'm going to tilt it like this towards myself so that I just get like half an impression of that sunburst. And then I'm going to keep going. And here again, half an impression. Here I can do a full one again. So we got one side done. Now spin it around, do the other side exactly the same. And again, I have my fingers down on the coaster and I give a little bit of downward pressure when I'm before I'm gonna hit so that my tool is nice and solid on the leather so it doesn't bounce. You can tell by the type, by the look of your impressions, if your leather needs to be re-wetted. Sometimes you have to add a little more moisture if you didn't get quite enough in at the beginning. Usually for a coaster like this, if you get the right moisture content at the beginning, you're not working on it so long so that it's good until you're finished. But um, if you're starting to feel like your leather is getting a bit too hard, and you're not seeing that nice dark, we call that a burnish, the nice kind of dark, deeper impression, then um, 
you need to re-moisten your leather. Go over it again with the sponge, add a little more water, and then let it dry for a few minutes so it's not mushy on the surface. Okay, got both sides done. Now we're going to do the outside, and this is where camouflage, the tool, this tool, gets its name. It's the same tool we just used with the two heels and the sunburst. The way we're going to use it is the two heels are going to point towards the edge, the outside edge of the coaster. And the deepest part in the middle here, the deepest part of this half circle in the middle, so the deepest part right in the middle, is going to be right on the line. Right on the line. So I'll show you one. Straight up and down. And you can hit it a little bit harder, this one. So it's going to be right on the line, that deepest part of the circle. Right here is right on the line. So it's going to hide that line. We're not going to see it afterwards. And it's going to camouflage. It's going to hide the edge of our design. So it's going to look afterwards like the design that we made into the middle goes right underneath that edge. So it gives us a nice finish. The next impression is going to be just like we did before with the other, with the veiner. The heel goes right into the previous heel. So this heel goes right into here, into the previous heel, and I turn it so that that uh, the deepest part of the circle is right on the line, and then a good a good hit. Whoops, right there. And this way we go all the way around. Heel into the previous heel, center of the circle, right onto. right onto the line. You can see that the coaster is warping a little bit. Sometimes it, the stamping also causes the leather to stretch a little bit. What some people do is they'll put masking tape on the bottom and uh, or some other. They'll sometimes even use a light glue to uh, glue it to a piece of cardboard or mat board, keep the leather from stretching. Also, if you have something on the back of the leather, the flesh side they call it, um, if you stain the front side afterwards, give it a darker or different color, then uh, it keeps the back from getting, um, from getting any stain on it. Okay, when you start to get close to fit, whoops, I was a little over too far there, sorry about that. Um, when you start to get close to the end, you stop when you have a few more of these left because you wanna make sure that, um, that you don't end with a half of one of these. Um, and you can stretch a little bit, you can put them a little bit further apart or a little bit closer together, a little bit more overlap. Um, so what I do is at this point, I will just put the heel, whoops, put the heel in here and make a little mark where the next one is going to go and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. So I can see that I'm just going to be a little bit short. So I'm going to stretch them just a tiny little bit. Um, so instead of going right deep into the heel, I'll just do a little bit onto the side of that heel, maybe. You won't see the difference afterwards on the outside, but you'll see that it's going to line up really nicely when I get... A 
And now the last one is going to be perfect. All right, so. So this finishes it off. Um, we're going to let it dry now. And uh, it's going to darken with time. But if you want to have it really nice and dark like this, you have to put some stain on it or some antique. But we'll talk about that uh, in another video, how to stain or antique. We for sure later on want to put a finish on here um, just to make sure that because it's a coaster and there's probably going to be some different types of water or coffee or juice or something on it. It'll soak up everything just like it soaked up the water before. So we want to put some kind of finish on it. And uh, you can use... You can use shoe polish, you can use this mink oil paste, something like that. Feebings is a, one of the most common companies that makes things for leather, but uh, they're big into making things for shoe polish and stuff like that. Or something like this boot wax. It says on there that it's a waterproofing agent. Well, it doesn't really totally waterproof your leather, but it will, it will make it water resistant for sure, and that's what you want. So you can put some of those on there, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in another in another video. So this is the first project. The next one is going to be a little bit different but using uh, using one tool the same and one a little different. So we'll see you in a bit.